All right, hi everyone. As I'm sure many of you are aware, Blender 2.83 has just been released and it comes with a whole host of new features. I will leave a link in the description to a couple of useful pages. One of them is on the official Blender website and provides a nice graphical breakdown of all the major things. And as well as this, fellow creator Southern Shotty has also done a feature breakdown video for the official Blender YouTube channel, so I highly recommend checking that out. Now there are lots of creators at the moment jumping on the bandwagon and doing feature breakdown videos for this version, but I'm not too interested in doing that, instead I'm just going to talk about a couple of features that I found really interesting and that I think I'm going to really enjoy over the coming months. And these are two things, adaptive sampling and optics denoising for the viewport. So I'm going to give you a quick explanation of what these do. Uh, let me go into rendered mode. Now if you're wondering what this scene is, it's something for a side project of mine that I'm not going to talk about just yet, so this is not available for download, just as a disclaimer. And at the moment I have both adaptive sampling and the viewport denoising disabled. Both of these features can be found in the render properties tab on the right. Adaptive sampling is quite clever because what it does is reduce the number of samples in areas that have small amounts of noise, with the end result being an increase in render performance and a more evenly distributed noise across the image. They've said in tests that they've managed to reduce the render times by 10 to 30%, but of course that depends on what's inside of your scene. Now because this is just a performance improvement, you won't really see much of a difference if I enable this. But I just thought I should make you aware of this feature because, I mean, who doesn't like Cycle's performance improvements? Already now that's out of the way, let's go on to the more exciting stuff, which is the optics denoising. Now first of all, if you don't know what optics is, NVIDIA themselves describe it as an application framework for achieving optimal ray tracing performance on the GPU. Essentially, you need to have an NVIDIA GPU, preferably from the RTX series, although there are some exceptions to that. If you go to Edit, then Preferences, then under System, you'll be able to see that there's a few options for the Cycle's render devices. There's None, CUDA, Optics, and OpenCL. None is for if you just wanted to render on the CPU, but CUDA, Optics, and OpenCL are for rendering on the GPU. CUDA and Optics are inventions of NVIDIA, so these are specifically designed to take advantage of their cards, and what they allow you to do is offload the render process to the GPU, which can massively speed up render times. CUDA is what I tended to use most of the time, and quite often I disable the CPU so I'm only using the GPU. And there are still some good reasons to use CUDA instead of Optics, because Optics does not support every single feature of Cycles yet, although I don't know the specifics at the moment so I can't tell you exactly what those are, but you will know when there are issues because in some scenes that aren't supported, when you go to render, it will just have a blank frame and it will say cancel in the top left of the viewport. But Optics is faster than CUDA on supported cards. Now Optics rendering is not a new feature that was added in 2.83, this has actually been in here for a little while, but the denoising features have been added in 2.83. So we'll take a look at these in a minute, but first of all I just want to give you a comparison of the render times. So if I set the render device to none, and then set this scene to render, you can see how slow it is. Okay, that's kind of boring to watch. Now if I set this to CUDA, and make sure on the right side down here I have device set to GPU compute, and then run this, you can see that's much faster. But now setting this to optics, again with my GeForce RTX 2080 Ti, set to GPU compute, that's even faster. So offloading the render processes to the GPU definitely helps with this, and it also makes the viewport much more real time. But of course, as it's calculating the samples, we can still see a lot of noise in the scene, and this is where the viewport denoising comes into play. On the right here in the render properties, if I click on the drop down for viewport denoising and choose Optics AI Accelerated, what you'll see is something very interesting. When the scene starts to render, it will be noisy, but then there'll be a moment where it clicks into being smooth. So let's take a look. Did you see that? I'm going to move the camera around again. You see that for a couple of moments there's a lot of noise and then it suddenly goes really smooth. But after it goes smooth, it doesn't stop rendering the samples. It keeps rendering the samples, but it uses those samples to inform the AI denoising to get more accurate results. So let's zoom into the background here and watch how the changes happen. You can see how over time the contours and the outlines of the mesh become more accurate as more samples are calculated. 
This is really good for visualization. It's so much less annoying. And just from an artistic perspective, it's actually quite satisfying to watch it like start to resolve over time. So this is a feature that I'm really happy with. But I'm sure some of you will ask the question, can we use this denoising not in the viewport, but instead in the final render? And yes, of course you can. What you need to do is you need to go to the view layer properties tab. Then at the bottom, you'll see a option called denoising, which you need to tick on. And then in here, there'll be optics AI accelerated. And you will need to tick this on if you want to use the optics version. You'll also see a drop down here called input passes. And this essentially lets you choose the pass, which will be the set of data the optics uses to denoise the scene. Or to use the more official description from the wiki, this controls which passes the optics AI denoiser should use as input, which can have different effects on the denoised image. Generally, the more passes the denoiser has, the better the result. It is recommended to use at least color plus albedo, as just color alone can blur out details, especially at lower sample counts. So of course, what I've done is set up a comparison for us to take a look at. You'll see there's four variations here. We have the option for no denoising, and we've got color, color plus albedo, and color with albedo and normal. If I zoom into the no denoising version, you can see how I've purposely limited the amount of samples to get all this noisy effect going on. And this is especially pronounced in the shadows here, where you can see that we've got these light values and dark values. This would typically be something that's really difficult for a denoiser to interpret. So we're going to take a look at how the optics denoiser has done. So let's start off with the simple one, which is just color. As we come in here, we can see that there's definitely a lack of noise. There's some strange blurry light areas and some of the detail on the tiles on the ground has disappeared here. But overall, this looks quite promising. It looks pretty good from a distance, to be honest. There's no noise whatsoever. Most of the larger details have been preserved. And looking at it from the general perspective of the viewer, there's little to no difference from a fully denoised scene. Now, if we come over to color albedo, when we zoom in, we start to see more of this distortion in the shadowy effects. Some of the ground details have been preserved more, which we can see. However, the actual denoising amongst these details is not that great. Now, of course, the quality of these denoising attributes will highly depend on the contents of your scene because these different settings will be appropriate for different types of content. Now, if we take a look at the color with albedo and normal, this result is pretty bad. I mean, sometimes it's blurred, sometimes it's quite distorted. There's quite a lot of mess going on. I think this is probably the worst result so far out of all of them. But again, it depends on the type of scene you have. So let's do a quick comparison between this and the color. So we can see all this distortion here in the shadows, and it doesn't know how to make its mind up here. Then if we go over to the color mode, much smoother. Some details have been lost, but it is generally more consistent. I do feel like this element, so just color alone, would be more appropriate for stylized artwork. But it's completely up to you for what passes you think you should use when employing the denoiser for your scene. But this is all, of course, only if you think that you do need to use a denoiser. It's always preferable going for maximum samples if possible, but this can save you on a lot of rendering time if the difference isn't that noticeable. For example, with this color one here, looking at it from a distance, it looks perfectly fine. It's only when we start looking up close that we'll start seeing some inconsistencies. Now, a minute ago, I told you that to use the optics features, you would preferably require an RTX series NVIDIA GPU. But while preparing this video, I did see that Blender today put out a bit of news showing that Optics will now work with even more graphics cards, not only the RTX series. So as we can see here, Optics AI viewport denoise will be available for all NVIDIA GTX 9 series, 10 series, and some GTX 750. So make your own mind up about these features. I think they're really cool, and I always welcome new performance improvements and ways to modernize path tracing engines because even just rotating this around in real time and watching it resolve, this just feels like a much more enjoyable experience than older versions of Cycles. So I'm really happy about this, and I can't wait to keep using it in the future. And as I say, I highly encourage you to watch Southern Shotty's video on the official Blender channel just to see the other features included, because there's so much more that comes with this release, but now it's full sail ahead to Blender 2.9. So if you found this video interesting, make sure to follow me for more content. Otherwise, I hope you're doing very well. So thanks for watching, have a great day, and I'll see you next time.